In this video, I'm going to be going over the four crucial things every engineering student should be doing before they start school. Let's go. Currently, only about half of students actually make it to graduation. And it's pretty clear that the level of preparation that students go into school with is not equal to the demand that school you know places on them. And then school starts, right? And before you know it, you're stressed out of your mind, you're overwhelmed with the amount of actual work that school demands of you. This is exactly what happened to me and I'm sure some of you guys can relate, you know, that are watching this video. So with this video, I kind of wanted to talk to my past unprepared self with the hopes to help some of you, you know, start off on the right foot and give you guys the best chance of success that haven't started school yet. Okay, so with that, let's get into it. The first piece of advice that I would give anybody that's about to start engineering school is to prep your schedule. So I talk a lot more about this in my book and, and in my course, but you know, you're going to be paying for your education with two forms of currency. The first is money, right? Pretty obvious. Tuition, books, you know, fees, supplies, all that costs money. Um, it's a fixed cost and it's the same for everybody. Easy enough. And the second form of currency is your time. So this one may seem obvious, right? You know, lectures, labs, homework, studying, all that requires your time. But I, I kind of want to break it down a little bit, right? So lectures and labs and things that are you know with the other students and with your professor those require a kind of constant amount of time something that's easy to plan for right a few hours a day in the morning or whatever um, easy to schedule easy to plan for right but then there's the time that you're going to have to spend on things outside of school right like homeworks studying labs working on projects and this is where it gets a little bit tricky because the amount of time that these things require is not the same for everyone right you know, some homework assignment might take uh, some kid an hour or two while it takes you five or six hours to complete. The point I really want to make here is that the amount of time required to be successful is different from student to student, right? And, and it's also different from day to day and week to week depending on your course load and kind of the workload that week. And you know, I like to look at time like currency, right? Because it illustrates that if you don't pay it, then you're not gonna get what you want, right? Just like if you don't pay your tuition, you're not gonna, gonna be allowed to graduate, right? Just like if you don't put in the amount of time necessary that's specific to you, the amount of time required for you to be successful, you're probably not gonna graduate. So with all that, all that being said, right? Before you start school, before you know how much time it's going to require of you, you should be freeing up as much time as possible in your daily schedule so that school has a place to fill in, right? It's better to set yourself up with more time than you need than less time than you need. Just don't make the huge mistake of thinking that you're gonna be able to fit school in to an already existing kind of busy schedule, right? Because that's a recipe for disaster. A lot of students do this and it bites them right in the butt. Okay, the next thing I would be saying to any future engineering student is to set your priorities. So another way to say this is that if you wanna be successful in an engineering or some other STEM degree, then your education must become your absolute number one priority. And you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you have to quit your job or you know, break up with your boyfriend or girlfriend. I'm just saying that everything else in your life should become flexible around your education, right? Not the other way around. You should try to view your education like your business, right? Like your livelihood, because that's what it's gonna become. It's gonna become your livelihood. You take care of your business first, right? And once you take care of your business, your school, your work, you know, your, your education, then you can start thinking about spending time on other things. And you know, this one can be kind of tricky because there's what you say and there's what you kind of tell yourself and then there's what you actually do. You know, most students, uh, if you go to any college campus, will say that their education is their number one priority, right, probably, but, but those are the same students that are cramming, you know, the night before exams and out partying Sunday night before Monday morning lecture. So you just wanna make sure that what you say, what you're telling yourself is in alignment with what you're actually doing, right? What you're actually plan on doing. Um, it's easy to tell yourself that your education is gonna be your number one priority, but it takes quite a bit of introspection and humility to align your actions with what you're telling yourself. So it's just kind of about getting in the habit of always asking yourself, always checking what you're doing uh, against your priority list, right? Have I taken care of my business? Okay, is that yes? Then I can start doing other things. But if I haven't taken care of my business, my school, then I probably shouldn't be doing what I'm, what I'm doing right now and I should take care of my priorities. So, you know, that's why I say it's so important to set your priorities, right? You're, not only are you trying to kind of uh, set it for yourself, 
but you're going to want to tell you know your spouse your significant other your work your friends you want to make sure everybody knows that you know school is about to become your number one priority and all of them are going to kind of move down a little bit and they should understand that you know that's not a bad thing you know you're trying to get something big done it's just going to take that amount of commitment hey everyone so at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that the engineering graduation rate is a measly 50%. And studies have shown that the reason for this is lack of preparation. So to kind of put it plainly, most students just don't know how to succeed in a high demand degree. And they're kind of just left to try to figure it out as they go. This is like asking someone who doesn't know how to swim to swim across the lake while learning how to swim along the way. That's a recipe for disaster. This is why I have created the 2.0 to 4.0 masterclass. This is the course that I wish I had before I started my engineering degree. So I took every lesson and technique that transformed me from a 2.0 student all the way to a 4.0 student and I combined it with all the best science backed, you know, studying and learning techniques and I put it all together in one nice compact course that every single freshman engineering student should be taking before they start school. And just to give you a better idea of what I'm talking about, this chart shows it perfectly. This is all of my grades during my own engineering degree. And right about here is where I really learned how to become a successful student. This is where I implemented the techniques and strategies that are in my course. Before this line, my average GPA was a 2.3. And then after that line, my average GPA jumped to a 3.8. And that's even with the difficulty of the courses, going up. And you know, if you're lucky that your school, your university might teach a course like this to the incoming freshmen. And actually, a lot of those schools use my book as the text for that course. But unfortunately, most schools do not teach a course like this. And you're just left to kind of figure it out as you go. I want to help you avoid that pain, right? I want to increase that graduation rate, which is why I created this course that I wish I had before I started school. The course that will teach any student how to be successful in a high demand degree. The course is available now and I'm actually offering it at a discounted rate for these first few rounds. So if you're interested, I suggest jumping on it. Check the description for a link to the course and for a link to my book. Um, and be sure to email me at becomingenengineer123 at gmail.com with any questions you guys have. Thanks for the support and back to the video. Okay, this next one's the big one. This It's the money maker, right? If I could give any future engineering student just one piece of advice, it would be to cultivate and strengthen your own self-discipline. Because more than anything else, self-discipline will take you wherever you wanna go, right? It, it's the thing that accomplishes all the tasks and gets the work done and opens all the doors. So what is self-discipline exactly? Well, to put it simply, self-discipline is your ability to consistently do something in service of a greater goal regardless of how you feel. It's your ability to consistently prioritize your goal ahead of how you feel, your emotions, and distractions. So in terms of school, you know, in the lens of school, the thing that you want to do is graduate, right? And the thing that you consistently have to do in order to graduate is study. Simple enough, right? Simple enough to say, but not to do. And that's where self-discipline comes in. So the question becomes, how can I develop my own self-discipline, right? If I haven't started school yet, how can I become a disciplined studier? And to that, I would say the best thing about self-discipline is that it's transferable, right? So you can become a disciplined person through basically anything, work, you know, school, athletics, sports, music, hobbies, whatever. And then once you become a disciplined person, you can apply that discipline towards school when it becomes time. So my advice on this one is pretty simple. I want you to set a goal and then to relentlessly and persistently work on accomplishing it. It doesn't matter what the goal is as long as it requires a good amount of work and dedication from you. It could be to get a 4.0, right? It could be to play a certain song on an instrument. It could be to get a six pack. It could be to run a half marathon. It could be to write a book. It doesn't matter what it is. You know, set a goal and work on it persistently regardless of how you feel, regardless of how motivated you are that day. And that is the recipe for building self-discipline. So by doing this, you know, you'll be honing your ability to consistently prioritize your goal ahead of the rest of the stuff in your life. And that's what an engineering degree is going to require. I could talk about self-discipline all day, but just know that, you know, once you develop self-discipline, once you have strong self-discipline, 
It's literally a vehicle that can take you wherever you wanna go. Okay, and the last piece of advice that I would give to any future engineering student is to adopt a growth mindset. So if you're unfamiliar with the idea of a fixed mindset and growth mindset, here's how they're defined. So a fixed mindset is defined by the following ideas. Intelligence is static, avoids challenges, expects rewards regardless of effort, ignores feedback and is threatened by the success of others. And that's in contrast to a growth mindset, which is defined as intelligence can be developed, embraces challenges, puts a high value on effort, learns from feedback and is inspired by the success of others. So I think the advantages of a growth mindset are pretty obvious, right? It's all about self-improvement and growing in the face of obstacles. You know, it's less concerned about the current state of where you are today and all about continuous improvement and learning to be better tomorrow than you are today. And I think most importantly, a growth mindset is what will make you a robust and resilient person, uh, regardless of the setbacks and challenges that come your way, which is exactly what you're gonna need if you're gonna take on an engineering or some other high demand degree. There you have it. You know, I wish someone would have drilled this stuff into my head before I started school. It would have saved me a lot of time and a lot of pain. But let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. But until next time, I hope you guys found that interesting. Be sure to check the description for a link to my course and a link to my book. And I hope to see you guys in the next video.